So we've already recorded a sample. So in this video, we're going to take a look at some sample editing inside machine. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just a bit of tidy up. I'm just going to give the sample a proper name. By the way, if you're wondering why you get all these numbers when you record a sample, it's a naming convention where you get the year first, and then I believe the month and the day, and then the time and so on. So I'm just going to give it a basic name here, drum loop. Okay, so let's go into our edit mode here from machine. So we go into sampling and then make sure we're on the edit tab. Now the editing tools appear over here on the right. And if you come over here onto the left side, you can see we have play range and selection range. So play range allows you to determine what portion of the sample you actually hear when you trigger the sample. So let's take a listen to this little section right here. And you can see how you can define the start and end points here with these two controls. And the encoders under the right screen allow you to zoom in and to move around. So I'm just going to reset this now so that we hear the entire sample. And then let's take a look at the selection range. So the selection range doesn't affect how the sample plays back. What it allows you to do is define a section of the sample and then apply an edit to that section. And the edit depends on the tool that you've got selected up here. So for example, with truncate, everything outside of my selection will be removed. So you can see now, we're just left with that selection as our audio. So I'm just going to undo this now by hitting Shift, Undo. And notice that when you make an edit, your sample gets a new version number. So that can help you keep track of which version you're working with. Okay, so let's move on now to the next editing tool. I'm just going to broaden the selection a little bit. So the next thing we're going to look at here is normalize. Now what normalizing allows you to do is just push the volume up of your sample all the way up to 0 dB, in other words, just before it starts to clip. So it's the loudest it can possibly be without distorting. And the next one here is reverse, which is quite straightforward. Just hit apply, and we've now reversed the sample. Now I do want to apply reverse to this sample, but only to one section. So I'm going to use the selection tool here. I'm just going to go right to the end. I'm going to zoom in here so I can get more precise. Then I'm going to hit apply. Okay, so I'm going to use the play range here just to select the last bar so we can hear that change. And as you can hear, that last section there has been reversed. Let's go to our next tool now. That's fade in. As you imagine, it just causes the audio to slowly fade in. I'm just going to undo that now. And fade out fades the volume out. So the next option here is to fix DC. And this will remove the DC bias if there is any. Now DC bias is typically introduced in the recording chain somewhere. And if your audio has a DC bias, you'll see that the waveform is not really centered. It's kind of pushed up above the center or below it. So it's safe to apply fixed DC just in case, especially if you see that the waveform is a little above or below the center line here. Now in this case, nothing will happen when I hit apply because there's no DC error to fix. Okay, so moving on here, we've got silence next. And I'm actually going to use this right now. So let's take a listen to the sample again. So this part right here, I want to silence. So let's just take a listen to this area. And I'm going to narrow my selection now. And I'm just going to isolate the portion that I want to silence. Okay, almost there. Just a little bit more fine tuning here. And that's it. So I'm just going to hit apply. And now that portion's been silenced. Let's just take a listen to this area. And perfect. So now I've applied silence and reverse to the sample. And that's all I really wanted to do here. So let's move on now to the next tool, which is cut. Now this actually enables you to cut something clean out of the sample. And this will actually mess around with the timing of everything that comes after that cut. So for example, if I just cut this portion here, you can see how the rest of the audio has moved in to close that gap. So if I play this back now, you're going to hear an obvious cut and the rhythm is completely thrown off. And I'll just play that again. So that really messes up the timing of the sample. So for our purposes here, I'm just going to undo that. So that's going to require a couple of taps of the undo button. 
Okay, so next here we have a copy and paste feature. This is quite easy to use. You just make your selection. And then when we hit apply, that's going to copy that portion. Then you go into paste. Make a new selection for where you want to paste and hit apply. Again, this is going to change the timing of your sample. So this is probably going to be most useful when you're dealing with non-rhythmic material. Okay, so again, I'm just going to undo that. And finally over here we have duplicate. And this is sort of an automatic copy and paste. It'll just take your selection and duplicate it. If you're sure that your sample is totally accurate in its length, you could just use this to double the length of a sample by duplicating the entire sample. Okay, so I'm just going to undo that. And that brings us to the final tool here, which is stretch. And this is where you can start matching the tempo of a sample to your DAW. And that is what we're going to explore in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you then. Take care.